Millions of men have recently started taking testosterone as a pill, nasal spray, or injection with a new industry booming. In 2021, a survey found testosterone supplementation is most common amongst younger men now more than ever before. So why are so many men huffing testosterone? What is it doing to your brain and body? And is it linked to a decrease in testosterone and fertility seen in men around the world? So to start, we must understand testosterone. Testosterone is a hormone. Hormones are chemical messengers in your body that flow through your bloodstream and bind to receptors on or in cells to stimulate action and maintain your life. Hormones are produced in endocrine glands in your body, such as the pituitary gland, pineal gland, thyroid gland, but your gonads also produce hormones such as estrogen from the ovaries or testosterone from the testes. Although testes do produce estrogen more on that later. Testosterone is a steroid hormone. So unlike protein hormones, which are made of amino acids and bind to the outside of cells, steroid hormones like testosterone can pass through lipid bilayers and enter cells to have their effect. After conception, before six weeks in the womb, no one had visible testes. In fact, whether you are a woman or a man or anything in between, before six weeks when you are in the womb, everyone was starting to grow a vagina. When conceived, you receive an X chromosome from your mom, but depending on which of your dad's sperm fused with the egg, you either get another X chromosome or a Y chromosome. Before before six weeks, all development is controlled by the X chromosome. But at six weeks, if you got a Y chromosome, the SRY gene encodes an SRY protein, which changes the gonads. The SRY protein causes the pre-ovaries to drop into testes, the labias to fuse into the scrotum, creating that line of tissue on the ball sack, and the clitoris grows into a penis. So yes, at first we all kind of had vaginas. Then if the SRY gene kicked in, you started to grow testes and started to produce testosterone. But there are exclusions to this process because human sex is complicated. You can have XY chromosomes and can appear female with a vagina, but have testes internally due to conditions along chemical pathways that happen after six weeks in the fetus. This is known as being intersex. It proves that the binary of being XX a woman and XY a man is not real. For the most part, if you are XY, the production of testosterone will begin to change your life as your pituitary gland will release a hormone called GnRH, which will stimulate the production of testosterone in the testes. The GnRH hormone is decreased during childhood, but when a person with testes starts to go through puberty around the ages of nine to 14, the GnRH hormone starts to pulsate again and things start to change. The first signs of puberty being the testes increasing in size and releasing more testosterone. The increase in testosterone is what causes the masculinization of boys. Their voice lowers, they grow body hair, start producing sperm. After puberty, the testes continued production of testosterone is important to help maintain bone density, fat distribution, muscle strength, facial hair growth, sex drive, and of course, continued sperm production. A feedback loop in the body regulates the amount of testosterone that flows through your blood. If testosterone gets too high, a signal is sent to the pituitary gland to decrease hormones, which decrease testosterone in your body. For this reason, testosterone levels can vary quite a bit throughout your life, but also vary quite a bit throughout the day. This is one reason why it can be so hard to define normal testosterone levels. So why is it that so many men are now playing with their endocrine systems and adding testosterone to their bodies. First, the most common reason for testosterone supplementation in older men is hypogonadism. Known as a TDS, testosterone deficiency syndrome, it's a common condition in aging men, but not many people talk about it. When a woman goes through menopause, there is a stark decrease in the hormone estrogen from their ovaries, causing typical symptoms such as hot flashes, mood changes, and everyone loves to talk about that. Men also go through a form of menopause. As they age, there is a decrease in testosterone from the testes, and an increase in the sex hormone globulin, which decreases bioavailable testosterone. But this decrease isn't stark. This process is slow and gradual, and for this reason, in many ways, it goes unnoticed. It is completely normal, and most likely one will never lose enough testosterone for it to affect them. But two to 5% of people with testes over the age of 40 have testosterone levels that are too low, leading to a TDS known as hypogonadism. Symptoms include extreme fatigue, decreased sexual desire, reduced body and facial hair, increased breast size, poor concentration, 
brittle bones, erectile dysfunction, and mood swings. You can't just say you have hypogonadism because you feel those symptoms. They could be due to something else. You have to have your blood tested by a doctor for testosterone levels to define yourself as having hypogonadism. The concept of testosterone replacement therapy was developed over 75 years ago to treat this condition. And the Baltimore Longitudinal Study of Aging reported the incidence of hypogonadism as 20% in men over 60, 30% in men over 70, and 50% in men over 80 years of age. It's difficult to diagnose. Again, as we said, testosterone levels can vary so much throughout the day. So you could get a low testosterone reading, but not have the symptoms and not have hypogonadism. A doctor needs to consistently look at your blood in order to understand if you have this condition. But hypogonadism is not explaining why so many young men are currently taking testosterone. One study of men entering a health clinic found that 43% of male respondents were interested in testosterone replacement therapy, but only half of them were even aware of what hypogonadism was. They were not there for this condition. Testosterone supplements and therapy have increased fourfold in the last 20 years for men between the ages of 18 to 45. Again, nothing to do with hypogonadism, and it is an increasingly popular and highly marketable industry. So why are so many young men playing with their endocrine system? A good place to start is in 2003 when Harvard Medical Study found that even among men who had normal testosterone levels, taking testosterone supplements led to a loss of fat, an increase in muscle mass, better overall moods, and less anxiety. In magazines, health subreddits, and YouTube videos, it is marketed as a remedy to aging and the weakening male body. There are studies that show testosterone can increase bone density and be a valid treatment for age-related decrease in muscle mass by increasing type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. A study on aging men with hypogonadism found that testosterone supplementation helped them bench press more and leg press more, bros. Anecdotal evidence says that men who take testosterone feel younger and more sexual, the most commonly reported perceived benefits of testosterone supplementations was improved sexual function, increased energy, and quote unquote, feeling better. In rat models, castrated mice would have reduced erectile function. When testosterone therapy was started in a castrated mouse, erectile function improved. Studying men with hypogonadism, it was found that testosterone therapy helped with sexual ability, morning erections, and sexual desire. Another survey found young men use testosterone therapy for reasons such as fatigue, erectile dysfunction, and depression. The issue is that now people are seeking out testosterone replacement therapy devoid of any connection to their doctor. There is a growing industry now of people willing to sell you this chemical without any testing. Therefore, many men are taking it without understanding if they are actually suffering from low levels of testosterone. It makes sense that you might want to attribute your fatigue, depression, lack of sexual desire to low testosterone without actually really knowing, then reaching for a supplement whose side effects might be you getting jacked. The thing is there are serious risks that can come with taking testosterone supplementation without consulting your doctor, especially if you are young. To start, there is some very confusing and conflicting research that will change based on which studies you are reading. One study clearly stated that testosterone therapy can increase your risk of heart disease, but this was a very small study and a recent meta-analysis, which is a study of many studies, found that it had no effect on cardiovascular disease if you had no comorbidities going into the supplementation. Testosterone companies and people who are proponents of testosterone supplementation will be pointing at this meta-analysis a lot. One thing we know for sure is that testosterone supplementation increases hematocrit, aka the amount of red blood cells in your blood. This is why it is important to have blood tests and your doctor monitoring your blood while taking testosterone as your blood will be getting thicker. As well, if blood cell amounts get too high in your blood, it can lead to cardiovascular disease, stroke, and pulmonary embolisms. Testosterone can stimulate the prostate gland and prostate cancer to grow, leading many medical professionals to worry about testosterone therapy leading to prostate cancer. But many other longitudinal studies investigating the relationship of testosterone levels and subsequent risk of prostate cancer failed to find any association. Although one study found that it could make already existing prostate cancer worse, but not technically create the prostate cancer. That's the conflicting research. Now onto the risks that we do know are real from taking testosterone supplementation. The biggest issue with young people taking testosterone supplements is decreased sperm count and decreased fertility. GnRH is the hormone needed for spermatogenesis to occur. When you take increased testosterone, it blunts the release of GnRH 
decreasing spermatogenesis, and can even decrease the size of the testes. This is why testosterone therapy can be okay for older men with hypogonadism because they've usually stopped trying to make a family. But if young men are taking this supplement without talking to their doctor to get bigger muscles, to feel better, more sexual, etc., they may not realize that they're decreasing their ability to start a family as well as shrinking their balls. In the last 40 years, sperm counts have decreased by 50%, leading to a huge fertility issue with one third of all infertility issues being linked to sperm. It's important that young men understand taking testosterone could increase their chance of being infertile. As well, we have a video you can click above about how the chemicals in plastics and air fresheners and fast food packaging are actually decreasing sperm counts, decreasing taint size, and in some ways, decreasing human penis size, as well as shrinking balls and leading to decreased fertility. Other issues with testosterone supplementation could be increased risk of breast cancer. There are no direct links right now as it is understudied, but the high levels of testosterone may lead to a biochemical pathway that stimulates increased breast tissue receptors, which could lead to increased breast cancer. One study of 45 men on testosterone therapy found breast cancer incidence of 11%, but it's not significant enough at this time to draw a correlation. This specific link is being studied a lot right now as young men taking testosterone is quite a new thing, so continue to look up on its effect on breast cancer in the coming years. An increase in testosterone will also lead to an increase in sebum causing acne. People on testosterone should monitor how bad their acne can get. Testosterone supplementation also leads to obstructive sleep apnea, but the biological pathway as to why is not currently known. If you already have sleep apnea, testosterone supplementation can make it much worse and even create it in people who start the supplementation. This can also lead to sleep issues, heart issues, and insomnia. Not to mention taking testosterone might make you a nasty snorer. Testosterone supplementation has also been linked to kidney stones, as well as more emotional side effects such as mood swings, irritability, and impaired judgment. If you have low testosterone or suffer from hypogonadism, testosterone replacement therapy can be very beneficial to your life. The only way to know this is if you go to a doctor and have your blood tested consistently to understand if you have low levels of testosterone. There are serious risks that come with taking testosterone without any relation to your doctor. The popularity of testosterone supplementation in young men is continuing to grow. It's all over YouTube. It's all over like GQ magazine. So we made a podcast with even more detail about what is going on with this really interesting way that men are playing with their endocrine system. So we are going to continue to do our research. Leave any questions below if you have them for us. We'll make more videos on this topic. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you soon for a new science video. Peace.